to um, open your Bibles to 2 John for our beginning verse this evening, for our study. Um, let's read together verse 10. 2 John in verse 10, the Word of God reads, If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. Now the sentence goes on beyond that, but I'm going to stop with that thought out of just that verse, verse 10. If any man comes to you and brings not this doctrine, now to understand the doctrine, we've got to back up and read verse 9, but if he brings not this doctrine, the scripture, the instruction there, if he's not bringing the doctrine of the instruction, then we are to not receive him into your own houses, neither bid him Godspeed. The doctrine in question there is found in verse 9. So let's back up and read the last, or read verse 9. It says, Whosoever transgresseth, transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. So the, the doctrine is the doctrine of Christ. Now that's a, a study that we can look at on a different day um, and studying out what the doctrine of Christ is. But if anyone comes to you and has not the doctrine of Christ, the scripture says to not receive him into your own house, neither bid him Godspeed. There's, a, there's a, a, a boundary that we're to put up there, that if someone comes to our own house and they have not the doctrine of Christ, there's a, a difference in fellowship that we're supposed to have. Part of what got me thinking on this particular topic is I was, um, I was thinking of, talking to a young man again recently. Doris and I um, were riding with him in the car several months back, and he was talking about the um, issue of homosexuality and some of the friends that was his age that were talking with him about homosexuality and the way that they felt like, well, we just need to love and be friends and invite them in the house and don't confront the sin. Let's just do all of these things that makes them feel good and comfortable. And he was trying to talk to me. He brought up this particular verse. He's like, no, if, if they're not, if not following the doctrine of Christ, not being invited in, in your own house. There's confusion at times in our, in our world or in who we are as Christians on what extent of love and grace and mercy that we're to extend to someone as opposed to whenever we're supposed to withdraw or draw back or to, to guard ourselves against the ungodliness that's going on there. God's Word all throughout, though, makes that plain to us that there are certain situations, as it says here in this passage, if they don't have the doctrine of Christ, in that certain situation, we're not to have them in our own house. We're not to have fellowship with them um, to the degree that we're called to here in this passage of Scripture. Not even to bid them Godspeed. And so I want us to look through some Scriptures and then come back to uh, an ending of this tonight um, of the instruction that God's Word gives us in not inviting someone into our house or bidding someone Godspeed that does not hold the doctrine of Christ. I'm going to go all the way back to the book of Exodus, chapter 23, as a starting point. I'll try to go in chronological order, or book order, rather, of the Scriptures here as we turn, because i got about eight or nine different Scriptures that I want you to look at this evening as I was studying. Exodus, chapter 23. Now we know as, as the nation of Israel left the wilderness and went into the promised land, there was an instruction to drive out all those other nations from the promised land because all those other nations served other gods. But they didn't exactly do what they were supposed to do. And so things got real muddy. Things got real complicated because there was a mingling together of the nation of Israel with these other nations. And so here in chapter 23 of Exodus, let's look together at verse 2. Well, let's back up and read 1 and 2 together. One says, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. And then it says in verse 2, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. That's complicated wording there. We're going to break that down a little bit. But the first part of verse 2, it says, Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Tell me what you hear that saying in that first verse. What? What do you think it means when someone follows the multitude to do evil? Just because everybody's doing it, you don't mean to do it. That's exactly right. Just because everybody else is doing it. It may be a majority of people who are professing Christians who say, well, let's just love this individual. Let's do it this way. These individuals, this group of people, let's do it this way. Be full of, of just um, gentleness toward the individual. 
just because the multitude is doing that, and it may look and have an appearance of being okay, we're not to do that as believers. Um, if God's word calls something evil, then it's evil. And there's a, an approach and a way that we're to approach and deal with and minister to those things which are evil. We're going to, well, really kind of end up at that kind of instruction when we get there. But it says we're not to do something or participate in something or condone something that God's word ascribes that it's evil. And then he goes on in the last part of verse 2 and he says, Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Now, that wording again is difficult, but to speak in a cause is to speak about, to talk, to use words about a situation. We're still talking about something that's evil. Don't speak about a cause that God's word says is evil when you're doing this, to decline after many. That means to bow down to the many. That's what that means. So the, the majority of people are going against God's word, and because the majority of people are going against God's word, don't speak into that situation if you're going to bow down to the many. If we were to take an issue, let's go back to homosexuality as the example. If we were to take the issue of homosexuality and we start out trying to talk about that issue, God's word makes that plain, but if we were to start out trying to talk about that issue and apologize from the beginning of what God's word says about it, when I know this is going to hurt you, I don't mean to hurt you, I love you, I love homosexuality, and we apologize in the approach, then we're declining to the many. We're bowing down to the opinion of the many. And if you do that, and it says, um, Thou shalt not, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. To rest judgment means to, to not speak what God's word really says. To put aside the truth of God's word. Now that instruction there is like what we started with in John, in the book of Second John, that we are to not even bring them in. There's a, there's a change in fellowship when someone does not bring to us the doctrine of Christ. Go to Exodus chapter 34. We see instruction here. It's a little bit plainer in this one. The language is plainer, I mean. Exodus chapter 34. Look, we'll be at verse 12. Exodus 34 and verse 12. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest. Now, that's Israel in the land, promised land. Those other nations, God said, drive out. They're not going to have fellowship with the other nations. So, so take heed to yourself lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. The covenant is an agreement with somebody else. And so if we go into someone who has not the doctrine of Christ, and we sit in agreement with those individuals, and an agreement, brethren, doesn't have to be that I say to you literally, I'm okay with what you're saying. I agree with that. that like, an agreement means also to sit without any judgment on the situation. To sit in silence oftentimes. To sit by while ungodliness is being talked about. While something that's other than the doctrine of Christ is being raised up in the conversation. Something other than the principles of God's word. And to not speak truth into that situation. That's to be in agreement with or be in a, in a, a situation with. We're not to, to do that with individuals. Um, because, what, what's the last part of this? What's, what's the problem if we... If we sit in the covenant with somebody of another nation, of another doctrine. It's a snare. It's a snare to who? Us. To us. All right. And we'll speak to that greatly at the end as well. There's a snare to us. If my home, that God has placed me over as a, as a husband and as a dad, if in my home I don't take the work of guarding my, my marriage and guarding my children to the degree of sincerity that God's word has called me to, to guard them against the, anything that's against the doctrine of Christ. If I don't take that seriously, it's not just that um, I'm allowing things to come into the house. Those things that's coming into the house, that false doctrine and those false ideas, I don't care what the rest of the world looks like or how many people are rejoicing in it, it's going to be a snare. It's going to be a stumbling stone. It's a, a foothold and toehold for Satan to come in. And don't ever forget the goal of Satan. Yeah. Satan's goal is not just to make you stop following Jesus Christ. It's to steal, kill, and destroy you, your family, your children, your testimony, your relationship, and your fellowship with Jesus Christ. Every piece of it. 
So we can't give that foothold or that toehold. Don't bow down to what the many are saying. And then here in this verse, in verse 12, um, be careful because if we do, if we allow that, then it's a snare to us. It comes in and it causes problems in the midst of us. Go over to uh, the book of Psalms, chapter 1. Book of Psalms, chapter 1. Let's read verse 1 together. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So the man that's blessed is the one who's not doing these things, who's not uh, stand, walking in the counsel of the ungodly, or standing in the way of sinners, or sitting in the seat of the scornful. There's a, there's a, a change in position that that man who is blessed has made for himself. That change in position is not to, to walk and to stand and to see it with something other than what God says is right and good for us to stand, walk, and sit with. And so his delight is in the law of the Lord. It goes on, on down. But look on it. It goes down to verse 4. It says, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. There, there's, a, there's going to be a moving out of those ungodly individuals. There's going to be a clear line that's delineated between those that are righteous. They will stand in the congregation of the righteous. And those that are the ungodly, they will not stand in the congregation of the righteous. That's what the scripture says there. And, and we as God's people, we have that command from the Lord to not be it, not allow someone to bring any other doctrine in than the doctrine of Christ to be with us, to be in our homes, nor to bid them God speak, or to bow down to it just because it's many, because it's a snare to us as a people of God, and it will not stand with us. Or we will not stand if we're doing that. And so we have to see that there's a change in position of the child of God who's going to be blessed if they're going to follow God's word. There's a change in position away from the things of the rest of this world. The scripture, we're not going to turn to this one. We did church camp on this several years ago. I hope that you remember this. But the scripture tells us to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. That's the change in position. It's to come out from among who? When it's saying them, it's that multitude, it's that many that's the tendency to bow down to and decline ourselves to because we second guess ourselves. Well, if everybody else feels that way, maybe I'm the one in the wrong. And don't trust the flesh and the reasoning of the flesh. Go back to what God's Word says. And when God's Word calls something evil, then it is evil no matter how we feel about it. And we're not to partake and participate and bow down to and allow and to tolerate the evil and the ungodliness that's there. Blessed is the man who does not walk, stand, or sit in the counsel of the ungodly in any shape, form, or fashion. Yeah. Go with me over to Proverbs chapter 13. I'm sure you know these, or I pray that you know these scriptures well. It's hard for us to do. Part of where I'm handed with all of this as well that God's got on my heart is, is back in Second John, in that verse 10, as it's talking about that, Someone who does not have the doctrine of Christ, do not have them into your house. I'm paraphrasing it at the moment, but don't allow them into your house, neither bid them God speak. It's getting to the personal side of that. I think that we here as a church, I think we would be guarded. I think we would be mindful of the fact if someone came in preaching any other doctrine than the doctrine of Christ. And it's easier for us as believers when we're with a congregation of individuals who hears the truth that God has blessed us to have the measure of truth that we do have. And then when you hear someone speaking error to that, it's easier to take a stand against that when you've got other brethren who are hearing and listening and are willing to take a stand with you. But that passage in Second John, John is talking about more of a, part of what it's getting to there is more of a perfect, we can apply it to the house of God, of course. But also on a personal level. What are you going to do? Are you going to invite them into your house? Are you going to bid them Godspeed? Are you going to do things without thinking about what you're doing? Are you going to be willing, even if you're by yourself, to take that stand? Everybody else is saying they're wrong. Everybody else, the multitude is saying you should do it this way. You just got to love them and don't confront the sin. What are you going to do individually? That's what I think Second John brings it down to is that personal decision on each one of us. Are we going to make those decisions and separate ourselves and stand with the righteous, which is the, God, the Word of God, or are we going to bow down to the many and the multitude because it's easier in the flesh to do that? Proverbs chapter 13, look at what verse 20 says. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, 
but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Now, I come to this verse because it's giving the contrast between the wise and the companion of fools. I love the first part of it. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. When you're around other individuals who are strong, godly individuals and they're full of the, the word of God and the wisdom of God's word, you just feel better when you're with them. It's easier to exercise wisdom when you're around people who are full of God's word. But it's, it's giving a clear picture there. If you walk with the wise, that man shall be wise. But it doesn't say the same thing when it gets down to that companion of fools. If we kept it the same, it would say, but a companion of a fool shall be a fool. That's not what the scripture says. But a companion of the fool shall be, what's that last word? Destroyed. Destroyed. Satan's goal, once again, I, just, I think of it in terms of our kids. Callie and I and Doris and I were having a, a pretty good discussion tonight at the dinner table talking about situations. And we have to remember as we're parenting our children, Satan's goal is not to just make it a little bit difficult. Like I said, it's to steal, kill, and destroy the heart, the mind, the testimony of our children. And we must be mindful and careful of the doctrine that's being taught to our children because if it's not the doctrine of Christ, and I could get very plain with some of the, the things that we need to talk about with that, but if it's not the doctrine of Christ and you're welcoming it into your house through the TV, through the things that are being taught, through the friends they're hanging out with, all that kind of stuff, then the end result to hang with the companion of fools is to be destroyed. We have a responsibility as parents and what comes into our homes. We have a responsibility as husbands and what we allow into our marriages and our houses. The wives and the moms have a responsibility to their husbands and their children in what they tolerate and allow in because the, without carefully and intentionally and with prayer and wisdom separating ourselves from the things of the world, the end result is destruction for your marriage, for your children, for your home, for a whole church. It's to be destroyed. Let's go to the New Testament look at some scriptures here. Let's start in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's look at verse um, 14. Verse 14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. What does it mean to be yoked together with someone? Someone tell me what it means to be yoked together with someone else. When you yoke together, you follow in the same paths walk together, one agrees with the other. Like you might think of two oxen. You wouldn't put a, a, a cow and a horse together. Uh, that wouldn't work. Yeah, they're not equally yoked. They're, they're not equally yoked. That's right. You don't put two people together um, and, and try to have them work together when they're not equal, equally yoked there. The scripture here specifically says, Be not unequally yoked with unbelievers. In <clears throat> verse 14, Be not unequally yoked with, together with unbelievers. Now, we have to be careful. The world, the Christian world today even, has, has made the word unbeliever be something that it's not. There's many times where we, the people of this church, are unbelievers. It's not talking about someone who's never been born again of the Spirit. It, it definitely indicates that. It definitely is a part of that. But you, you young people in the room, as you are ready to date and begin to seek out a partner in marriage, if the other person doesn't love Christ and is willing to follow Christ and let God's Word be the guide, do not engage in a relationship with that individual. You're yoking yourself together with an unbeliever. Um, they may give pretense, and yeah, I'm a Christian. They may say um, the right kind of things, but if they don't go to church, if they don't make God a priority in their life, then they're yoked to, you're yoking yourself together with an unbeliever. What someone says, as opposed to how they live out their life, are two different things. And as Brother David said, to be yoked together with someone is to be walking in the same path, to be in agreement with them, to be working in the same direction, to have the same mind, which should be the mind of Christ and the, the spiritual mind that we're called to have. But if it's an unbeliever, we have the responsibility to discern that. And again, there's a change in position. I'm not going to yoke myself. We are not to yoke ourselves with unbelievers. We have to be careful with that as a body of believers, or as Christians. It goes on there and it says, let me read the whole of verse 14 now. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. 
For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? It asks two questions there at the end. What fellowship does light have with darkness? They're the opposite. Light will dispel the darkness. And so if you're being the light of the world, if you're being the salt of the earth, as God's word tells the believers to be, the Christians to be, then that light is going to dispel the darkness. There is no fellowship that the light can ever have with the darkness. If we're having fellowship with darkness, it's because we are not being light. And we're not being light because we're not listening to the doctrine that that person is bringing in. We're welcoming in someone other than the doctrine of Christ into our homes and our lives and our families. Or we're, you know, we go back through the scriptures now and kind of think about that. We're standing and sitting and walking in the counsel of the ungodly. That's the reason we have fellowship with darkness. is because we're not holding up that doctrine of Christ as we ought to hold up. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers is the instruction. Go over to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Let's, let's back up to verse 6 and we'll go down to verse 14. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 starting in verse 6. It reads, Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received of us. Now the instruction there is very plain. We're to withdraw ourselves from who? Who does it us to withdraw ourselves from? Believers who are walking disorderly. Believers who are walking disorderly. If they bring out some other doctrine. Now I'm going to unpackage that at this point and kind of look at that. A doctrine, if they bring anything other than the doctrine of Christ, the simplicity of, of that is if they bring and teach anything other than what God's Word teaches. Because all of the Scriptures is the doctrine of Christ. All of the Scriptures is the Word of God. It's the written Word of God that's given to us by the living Word, Jesus Christ. And so we have to study out God's Word. If someone comes in and they begin to teach and speak and say something, or if someone were to come into this house of God here and they're walking disorderly, which means they're not following God's Word, we're to withdraw ourselves from that individual. There's a change in position, yet again, in this passage, away from how we interact. The Scripture does not ever tell us, this is part of where I'm headed and what's on my heart for us to look at finally, the Scripture does not ever tell us that when someone's walking disorderly, when someone's got a doctrine other than the doctrine of Christ, that we're just to be complacent and gentle and easy and never confront the sin in their life. It never tells us to do that. For a child of God to speak or to have grace without speaking truth is to not be a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm going to reverse that in just a second. But to be a follower of Christ and to have grace with someone without the truth is not to be a follower of Jesus. They're not being a follower of Jesus Christ. I want that, that plainness to be there. John chapter 1 says this about Jesus. Don't turn there. I'm just going to quote it for you real quick. Like. John chapter 1 says this about Jesus. Jesus is full of grace and truth. Not full of just one of those, but full of grace and truth. So we must also, for following Jesus, be full of grace and truth. It's too often in this world today that, that in the Christian culture of the day that we want to be full of grace without truth. That's the easy, the easy way out with the flesh. God gave some to be preachers and teachers and some to be prophets. We're all called to have a testimony of prophecy or to call out sin whenever sin is there. If you really love your brother, you're going to speak to that brother about the sin that's going on. You're going to say that doctrine is not the doctrine of Christ. But you're also going to guard yourself and your family or the household of faith that you're a part of if that doctrine is coming in, it's not the doctrine of Christ as well, because the end, end result of that is destruction. If we don't deal with the sin and the issue. And so, that's what it says in verse 6, and we'll go down to verse 14. And if any man obey not our word by this epistle, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. So we ought to, we're, to, we're to note that individual who's bringing any other doctrine than the doctrine of Christ. Note that individual, have no company with him, so is what it says there, that he may be ashamed, that he may be aware 
Okay, I, I'm not walking with the, in the counsel of the ungodly, therefore I'm not standing with the congregation of the righteous. And, and there's a notable difference for him. The only reason there's a notable difference for that individual, though, is because the people of God have changed their position from one of just sitting in fellowship to now one of, of ministry. Look at what it says in verse 15. Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. So there is a position of ministry. When someone brings any other doctrine, the doctrine of Christ, don't welcome him into your house. Scripture doesn't say slam the door in their face. It's talking about the level of fellowship that we have with that individual. There's a difference in ministry, a position of ministry that we take with those individuals. Now, there's one more passage that I want us to turn to, but I want to, well, maybe two. But I want to say this um, real quick like, as we're looking at these scriptures, I, I believe I could say for each one of us in here, I think we've heard these scriptures. We, we know the principle taught in God's word that we're not to have fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. But in withdrawing ourselves, we also must be careful that we don't in self-righteousness withdraw ourselves as though we are better than that individual. Go to Galatians with me for just a second. Galatians chapter 6. A change in position in withdrawing ourselves or not having fellowship or in a position of ministry does not mean that you're putting yourself as though you are better than the other individual. That's, that's the work of Satan as well to make you feel like you're self-righteous or have a pharisaical attitude towards someone because we're not. But by the grace of God, we would be bringing in that doctrine that's other than Jesus Christ as well. But by the grace of God... We're, we're walking in that darkness that it's telling us to have no fellowship with. By the grace of God, we have what understanding we have. Look at what it says in Galatians chapter 6, beginning of verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest thou also be tempted. In that process of ministering now to the individual, we must be considering ourselves. What do we need to consider about ourselves? Am I being pharisaical? Am I being... Uh, haughty and high-minded and prideful and arrogant? Or am I listening to the doctrine of Christ and following what God's Word says and pouring back into that individual grace and the truth of God's Word? We've got to have both of those together. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. It all connects together here, so it's hard just to not go to these passages. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. And we'll start down below. There are several things in this chapter here. Verse 11. It says, But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, or covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such a one know not to eat. That's again a change in position of the fellowship. If a brother is living in that, walking in that kind of ungodliness. And it gives the list of some things there. We're not to have that kind of fellowship with that brother. Now that's pointing to, specifically to church discipline. There's a change in the way that we have fellowship with an individual at that point. All right? Why do we need to do that? Why is that in, in seri important for us to do? Back up to um, verse 6. The church at Corinth there had not dealt with that this way. And so Paul says to them, your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? So why is that important for us to do? To change our fellowship, to deal with church discipline, or these other passages of scriptures, to not welcome him in our home, not bid him God speed, you know, to have that change in the level or degree of fellowship. Why is it important for us to do? According to verse 6 there. So it won't spread. So it won't spread. That's right. We need to consider ourselves. If we think that we got it all under control, you better watch out. You're about to have a fall. God's Word gives us instruction to not welcome in a doctrine that's not the doctrine of Christ and the command to speak truth to those individuals. And we speak truth and they won't receive it. We're to put them away from among ourselves. But all the while being very mindful of ourselves. There's a position of ministry that we move ourselves into. And it's not the ministry. We have to define God's Word. It's not the ministry that a lot of people want it to be today where you just 
without speaking truth, you just are gentle and comforting and loving and you accept them in and you hold on to them and you do all these kind things that look like grace. It looks like you're full of love. But according to the definition of God's word, it's not love nor is it grace. It's selfishness on your part. Because God's word tells us to be full of grace and truth. Now, not everybody is a brother. Not everybody is a member of this church. And yet we interact with, on a daily basis, lots of people that are of the world who do not have the doctrine of Christ or who are walking in the counsel of the ungodly and those kind of things. Back up with me here in this passage of Scripture to verse 9. 1 Corinthians 5, 9 says, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters. Now the wording there is, now consider about all the people of this world who are fornicators, and extortioners, and idolaters, and those kind of things. If we take these scriptures to where, if anybody is, an, uh, is any of those things there, well, you might as well isolate yourself and have nothing to do with anybody. That's what it says there in the rest of that verse in 10. For then must ye needs go out of the world. The scripture is saying there, if our decision is to never have anything to do with anybody who is doing something wrong, doesn't have the doctrine of Christ, then we might as well go ahead and leave the world. Yeah. While we are believers, we are in this world around all of these things, but we're not of this world. And that's the purpose of changing the position of fellowship with individuals. If someone comes to your home and they do not have the doctrine of Christ, do not welcome them in and do not give them God's speed. Do not say to them God's speed. Why? If you do, that leaven is going to spread to you. If you do not, not in a hateful, arrogant, high-minded, haughty, legalistic, self-centered kind of mindset, but in a position of, but by the grace of God, I would be the one at this door, bringing in the doctrine of Christ. And because I love, according to scriptural love, I'm going to speak truth. We're to look different from the rest of the world that people might know there's a difference. I've been standing in the counsel of the ungodly. I've been walking in the way of sinners. I've been sitting in the seat of the scornful. And I know because I can see others out there who are standing in the congregation of the righteous and I'm not there. There's a purpose. That's the ministry that God's word calls us to. Yeah. To be careful that we don't minister, call it ministry, in a way that we also by being grace, gracious and being gentle, that we're bringing to that person something other than the doctrine of Christ ourselves. And so, I think when that young man brought up that particular verse, he did a good job with that. Because he was being lied at that point. But when we don't do what God's word says, when somebody's got something other than the doctrine of Christ, this is how I want it to end. I want you to kind of think of it like this way. And I never, as I was praying through this, I never... This it's is Clay speaking for just a moment, not, you know, not the Word of God. I never want something to come across as though it's I'm trying to guilt you or anyone's trying to guilt you into doing something that you, you know, God's Word says. You have to pray through and think through with God's Word, with the Spirit of God, what's the position that God would have me to take with this situation? Now, God will never lead you contrary to His Word, but if you pray through and you walk in the Spirit and you seek after the Spirit what the appropriate approach is, then you're going to speak truth with grace to those individuals. But if you don't, and you just make up your mind what you're going to do, you are one of those individuals who's bringing something other than the doctrine of Christ to that situation. And so that's the warning for us as a people of God. We could say, oh, that they're bringing, the doctrine of Christ, bringing in something other than the doctrine of Christ. Yet if we're not acting on what God's word says, we also are doing that. That's the point that I feel like God would have me to make for us tonight. Yeah. Psalm 119, verse 63. We can close out with this verse. Psalm 119, verse 63 reads, I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. That's the instruction for us as a people of God is to Fear the Lord and keep his precepts. In doing that, that's bringing forth the doctrine of Christ no matter where we're at. So I'm a companion. That's a position of fellowship and relationship and connection that we're supposed to be in as a people. I'm in companionship. 
with those that fear thee, as it says there, and them that keep thy precepts. And anyone who does not fear the Lord or keep the precepts of the Lord, they're not keeping because they don't fear, then our position with that individual needs to change. Change to one of true biblical ministry. Because if we don't, then we're also being the one who's not bringing the doctrine of Christ to that individual. It's a fearful place to be in when we make that kind of decision. When we walk with-